Welcome to Better Sex, where you get the information and inspiration to create and enjoy your best possible sex life. Join your host, sex therapist Jessa Zimmerman, as she brings you expert guests, helpful tips, knowledge, and strategies to improve your intimate relationships. And now, your host, Jessa Zimmerman. Hi, I'm Jessa. Welcome to Better Sex. I'm doing this because I think sex is important. We are not living our fullest life, the most fulfilling way we can, if we are not intimately, emotionally, and sexually connected with our partner. So I'm here every week bringing tips, perspectives, experts, ideas, strategies to help you improve your sex life. Enjoy the show. So here's a different topic for today. We're going to be talking about matchmaking, which uh, I I don't know if you think of as old fashioned or totally new and novel. (laughs) And maybe it's been both over time. You know, but in the world of online dating apps, swiping left, swiping right, liking all that stuff, there's there's still people out there working in a way more personal, personalized way to help you find your perfect partner. So my guest today is Peggy Bennett, and she is the founder of Straight to the Heart Matchmaking. So she's based in Bellevue, Washington, and she's got this business, you know, hooking people up. Well, maybe that's the wrong word to use. Connecting people, <laughs> finding matches for people. We're going to learn all about that process, how she got into it, how it works. How does it compare to online dating? What are the benefits? Who's it for? Right. She is certified in matchmaking. Actually, she went to the Matchmaking Institute in New York. So she's got, you know, the only school in the world authorized to issue a certification in matchmaking. So she brings her qualifications and her passion to this work. And I hope you enjoyed the interview. So Peggy, thanks so much for being on my show. Oh, thank you for having me. I think this is going to be a really cool conversation. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually really curious <laughs> about what it is you do and how this works in the modern world. So um, give give my listeners just a little background about you and how you got into matchmaking. Like, why, why are you doing this? Oh, sure. I feel like it's part of my DNA, actually, matchmaking, because I remember as young as junior high, believe it or not, me setting up people. So, really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. So it's just kind of how I'm wired, I guess. And I had a long, successful career, 20 years, believe it or not, at Nordstrom. And even when I was working there one-on-one as a stylist, I would have people talk about their horrific dating experiences. And and they even mentioned that dating online, they felt like it was like a part-time job. They worked and then they had to go home and felt like they had to work again as just finding someone. And so I just... Just thought, you know, I even though I loved Nordstrom, it was time for me. My inner voice was saying to go out and open up this matchmaking firm called Straight to the Heart. So I did it. So had you? I mean, that's the first thing that occurred to you with leaving your job. Is let me let me start matchmaking. Like this had been waiting in the wings this whole time. Yeah. Well, I also for those that remember Patty Stanger from Matchmaker Millionaire, it's a Bravo show. Oh, okay. I had watched that and she actually, I would say about, she started the show about 10, 12 years ago and she kind of put matchmaking on the map as a profession. Okay. Okay. She went to this matchmaking Institute in New York and I ended up going there and getting schooled there. It's the only matchmaking Institute in the nation. I went there to get schooled because I thought, you know, if I'm going to open my doors as a matchmaker, I wanted to really have the proper credentials. So what did you, what did you learn? Like what's part of that training? I mean, not like you have to tell us everything, but sort of what are the basics of what a matchmaking school teaches you? Sure. It teaches actually a little of how to really read people and really have that. uh, I feel like personally people 
everywhere has that intuition, but you kind of have to practice that muscle. Okay. So I kind of naturally have that. And so it came a little easier, but it's things to look for as far as when you're dealing one-on-one with people and um, really listening to what they're looking for and working with your clients to also how to run a business. So it's kind of that twofold. Plus, then we had some great speakers come in that are authors of, for instance, Attached. I don't know if you're familiar with that book. The author right now is not coming to my mind. But anyway, he had uh, he um, spoke on his book and just about all different personalities that you come through. And it was great experience. And then there's people from all over the world at these conventions. So it was amazing networking opportunity. So I now have a network in California, in New York, that I can rely on if I ever have any questions or if we want to work together and collaborate. Right. Okay. Cool. So yeah. what is it what is it you do? What does a matchmaker do? Sort of what's the if somebody works with you, what's what's the process? Sure. So the type of matchmaker I am is called a traditional matchmaker. And that is the most common throughout the nation. And it is that I work for the single gentleman. So they sign up for a year. I offer them unlimited matches through my database of straight to the heart female members. Okay. I provide them with unlimited introductions and um, what it is, it's a a simple date that I introduce them and it's actually a blind date. And believe it or not, people are kind of excited about that concept. (laughs) Yeah. There's no texting beforehand, no phone numbers are exchanged and people really welcome that these days, just because of all the texting issues that go on with dating. Right. I um, have a concierge that picks out a restaurant and they meet for about an hour and a half over a cocktail appetizer. And then again, there's no phone numbers exchanged. It's meant to be just really relaxed, easy. And at the end, they say their goodbyes. And then the following day, they give me feedback on their dates. Okay. So the pressure is off about, you know, do I have to tell you if I like you at this? I mean, we both agree. We're going to go have this meal. We're going to part and then we'll figure out (laughs) if there's any, if we're coming back together at all. Okay. And what's pressure off and it makes a huge difference. People are so much more relaxed during the date because of that. Right. Right. What's your process before those, those matches happen? I mean, what's your, your interview process or how do you get to know your clients? Oh, sure. You know, to pick to pick who you send them out with. For every single, I sit down one on one, and I I like to do it personally versus my any my assistants. I sit right. one on one, and I ask them a variety of questions. Anything from from a one to ten. Do you feel like you're introvert extrovert to polit- politics, religion, uh, your lifestyle? What are your goals that you aspire to? anything like that. And I really go into depth and find out about them. And so if I, so if I understand you, right, the women don't pay, right. To be part of your database, but you have, you have found them somehow or they, or they've approached you. Right. They, they pay a minimum amount. Okay. Yes. Okay. And so you've got to get to know all of them personally as well. I do. And they pay a minimum amount because there's no guarantee that they're going to be set up with a bachelor. It just depends on the bachelor I'm working with, if they're a suitable potential match. Okay. So they don't pay a large fee. Okay. As opposed to the the men who are your main clients yes. paying a larger fee because they know you're going to send them out with, with several people over the course of a year, potentially. Exactly. exactly. Right. right. Okay. Right. Okay. And the services I provide, I provide unlimited coaching for both men and women during, during the course of their memberships. Okay. I'm getting more questions more quickly than I can ask them now. So how, how long do you work with a couple? Let's say they go out and they really hit it off and they start to spend time together. Like how much are you involved in the relationship as it progresses? Or are you done once they get to date number two? Like how how does that work? Good question. So it kind of depends on the couple, but once they both like each other, I always suggest 
to the gentleman for the second date to be more of an activity than just sitting next to each other. So they kind of get to know each other in a different way and it's even more relaxed. Mm-hmm. And then they're on their own unless a bachelor comes to me and asks me questions like, do you have any date ideas or what do you think of this? Um, it's really dependent on the bachelor. They just keep they just keep me posted as to they're basically on their own, but they have me to ask any questions or feedback, either one of them along oh. the way. Okay. So in the course of their year... I don't know if you call it membership or, or contract with you. If if six dates in, 10 dates in, somebody wants to come and say, wait, uh, my, my issues around abandonment are coming up or I'm struggling with communication. I mean, you know, if they need coaching, you're, yes. you handle that as well. Okay. Or if they break up and they want to start over partway through that year, I guess, right? Right. Absolutely. And okay. if the bachelor starts seeing someone, then their contract gets put on freeze. Okay once they're exclusive with someone. Okay. Okay. Now, do you only work with heterosexual couples? Because a lot of this language seems like that's what you're doing. I I do. Um, okay. That, that is just my business model that I choose to work with. Um, my matchmaking is a boutique style. It's kept small. So right. people, uh, I would love to welcome everyone. It's just where I've chosen my business model to be. Right, right. No, it makes sense. You've got sort of a niche there. Are, are there other matchmakers that work with same-sex couples that you know? I, I would imagine yeah. you do. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. How do you describe the differences, the benefits to this versus online dating? Right? Because like, it seems like that would be a large part of the competition sort of in this marketplace is most people can just go on and swipe, you know? So, <laughs> right, exactly. So, pros and cons. I think online dating, there's a time and place for it. I think mm-hmm. it's great for those people that maybe they've been in a long relationship, uh, whether it's a marriage or just relationship, and they've gotten out of it and they just need actual practice dating. I think online dating is great for that reason. Just okay. to have practice, if that makes sense. But for the most part, the beauty of matchmaking is because everyone who ends up signing up for matchmaking, they take it really seriously and they want a long-term relationship. They're paying the money. They're taking the time to meet with me and everyone, all the singles I meet with are, that's their long-term goal. Whether they're younger and they actually want marriage and kids or they're older and they want a long-term partner. Okay. So the, yeah, obviously the level of investment is so much higher that that would, that would indicate their level of commitment to this process, right? And, right. Right. And so wanting that out automatically. Yeah. Yeah. What else would you say are differences or things to consider if somebody's listening and thinking, wait, do I want to use a matchmaker? Is there something else they should be aware of? For my firm anyway, I my niche is working with professionals. So the age group is like 27 to about 65. And I really am proud of the fact that my singles are just very quality professionals. So it Definitely, when you're online, online right now is become so, so saturated, it takes so much time where I can save the person a lot more time and I can definitely do all that. I'm basically the, your headhunter <laughs> for your heart, I like to call it. <laughs> right, all that all pre-screening that and sort you. of, I mean, coming down into your niche, right? right. That's that's who you're working with. So I... so. I I guess that means you would turn people away from your business, right? That don't fit that profile or somehow don't seem like a good match for your your database. I have. And I'm really localized to the Seattle and East Side area specifically. So how do you evaluate a match? Like, I think what I want to know is what... What have you learned about what makes people compatible? You know, because you you go through these big interviews, you ask them all these questions, and I'm wondering which ones, like, it's not such a big deal if they're different, you know, cat person, dog person, you know, versus something that like really is crucial that they better align, you know, like on politics or religion or something, or is that different for each client? Or do you have, do you have some ideas about where those fundamental alignments need to be? Yeah, great question. It 
does vary person to person. And one thing I always say is no one, no matter if you're the million dollar matchmaker, no one can can predict chemistry. That is one thing. But one thing I look at are the fundamental values, core values people have, and whether some are more important than others in individuals, be it religion or even lifestyle. But with personalities, you're right, you look at personalities, and there is something to be said about some do, the question is, do some opposites attract? They can, but not, I haven't seen necessarily extreme opposites. There's uh, that fine line, and that's where I kind of rely on me as far as when I interview people, I really, when they're they're sitting across from me. I really take in their energy. So it's a little more than just Mm -hmm. them answering questions. I'm soaking up their energy. And, and that's something that you cannot get when you're swiping. Right. right, right. right You've got your your gut is in this equation. And so when you're meeting with somebody, are you imagining him with the different people and like, you know, like how I, absolutely. Right. Right. So it's like, you're trying to get an energetic feel for how these two might go, or these two might go. Right. So are there certain combinations of things where you just throw out that match right away? Like, no, I'm not even going to consider these two because he's this and she's that. Well, it's a fine line. I do ask some questions like if you were in my chair and I come up with somebody in my mind, I will actually throw out some questions. For instance, if someone doesn't have children and a gentleman has a, let's say, seven-year-old daughter, would you be open to that? There's fundamental questions right. that I do ask. At the same time, I'm the type that I love to pe- push people's envelope a little. I did that even at Nordstrom when I was a stylist, and I've had success with that. So there's that fine line. I will never pressure you into going on a date, but there is a fine line where you are single and you are seeing me mm-hmm. for a reason. And somewhat to have that open mind around certain things. And I have found a lot of success doing that. So I'm always like the one thing everybody says, what can I bring to you when I set up an appointment to interview? And I'm yeah, like, just yeah. bring your open so mind. Do you, do you have examples that come to mind so, of like some of the surprising matches that have really worked or, or somebody, you know, or at least maybe your clients were surprised. Like I never would have thought I'd go for somebody with children or, or, a couple come to mind right out off the bat, and guess what? It oh, really? With height, <laughs> height. Yes, both women were expecting to meet their prince charming that was tall, dark, and handsome. And one, her now husband is probably okay. two inches okay. shorter than her, <laughs> and, and the other is maybe yeah. just one inch taller than her. And they're both now the gals are married and and completely completely in love but when they saw me they definitely wanted someone and they pictured someone in their mind to be that tall wow. dark and handsome man yeah yeah so that's what i mean about keeping an open yeah. mind you just and that does know. seem like a really different i mean I haven't been on online dating in a long time, but it's like there's so many criteria that you can fill out and exclude from your searches, right? And there's nobody there telling you, wait a minute, maybe this isn't as important if the right person was there. You know, that that does seem to really set apart your right. services That's because you can, you can try to get somebody to suspend part of that and it's like, consider this person, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. that makes sense. Exactly. Hey, it's Jessa here, just taking a quick break in the show. So glad you're with me today. I want to invite you to be a part of the conversation. I run a free Facebook group called Sex, Intimacy, and Relationships. And I share articles and resources. I foster conversation and community. I'm there to answer questions if you post them. And I broadcast live, delivering information, ideas, inspiration that could help you with your sex life. I'd love to have you join me there. You can find a link at bettersexpodcast.com slash community.
And what are the what are the biggest red flags in your own mind as your match? You know, like I would never put this and this together. You know, just from your own, I guess your own perspective, yeah. if you have some of that. And you know, you may not have an example of that, but I was just curious. Uh, yeah, nothing comes to mind. I mean, that's how. Yeah, that's what an open yeah. person I am. Yeah. It seems like my job most of the time mm -hmm. is opening them up um, right. versus the right. other way around. Yeah, they come in a little more yeah. closed off, having a specific list. And a specific list is great as far as characteristics, but a description of someone meaning, oh, I want them to be six feet tall, that's where I really push the envelope and say, you know, I'd right. love for you to keep right. an open mind. Okay. No. So as a, as a matchmaker, I mean, certainly part of what you're doing is setting people up on actual dates, right? So what kind of advice or tips do you have around just how to date? What makes a successful date for two people? Well, I have eliminated the exchange of phone numbers so that they do feel much more relaxed. I remember back when I was dating, I thought that was just so unnerving at the end, right? Yeah, yeah. You probably there we all where you're just not quite sure oh gosh does he like me what are we going to be doing now right that awkward goodbye so I do eliminate phone numbers so that you're more relaxed and it's just being successful is kind of I feel like is a little common sense being really open not just personality wise but with your body language being real positive open keeping conversation really light, not going into <laughs> politics or religion, no matter how, or <laughs> yeah. no matter how tempting to try to keep at least the very first meeting, I think of is a way to get to the second date. The first date is a way to get to the second date. So it should be as light and fun as you can make it. So. Okay. And then I know you said you, you personally like a second date to be activity based. So still kind of low key and light, but more active and a different sort of engagement. Exactly. Because the first date is a lot of times you're sitting across from each other and it can kind of right, feel almost right. like an interview. And so one of my favorite things to do is if they can find a spot at the bar so they can sit next to each other. It's it's intimate, but at the same time casual. And you have the bartender there too to look at for activity and interaction. So it makes it, it takes it to a much more casual, right. more comfortable vibe than being across, across from each other. Because let's face it, it's, it's just kind of a right. little unnerving anyway, right? It's a blind <laughs> So... <laughs> There's going to be some nerves. And you know what? That's another thing is it's okay to be nervous. I've been on a date and I've been nervous and I'm a matchmaker for goodness sakes. So it's okay just to say, you know, yeah, what? I get yeah. kind of a little nervous. You didn't say that out loud. You know, it makes you human and usually you get a little laugh and it, it makes it actually, it releases the tension yeah. just by saying yeah, that out absolutely. loud. Absolutely. So what, where do you think dating's going in the future? I mean, obviously the, the online dating has exploded, right? There are more and more apps and platforms for that. But do you, do you think matchmaking is, is making a, a comeback and it's going to be bigger? Or do you, do you see some other way that people might connect? You know, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers that matchmaking is going to really blossom more and more because people are craving that more just personal touch. The fact that People actually can get dressed up and go on a date. And that leads me to the last tip that I didn't touch on is please pay attention to how you dress and really take time to yeah. look your best. When I work with singles, they are so, they're so looking forward to the matchmaking process because we are in such a tech obsessed society. And it's kind of like it's an old fashioned industry in this modern day age and it's the women that really actually look forward to getting dressed up and the anticipation of meeting someone new and it's just you know yeah. it's really refreshing so i'm hoping that it's only going to blossom more it's really prevalent in cities such as san francisco la chicago new york and i'm hoping that it even gets bigger yeah i mean i would imagine and i did do online dating 
some, um, and actually did meet my partner. So I, I had success there. But even the brief time that I was in that, the the impersonal nature of it, the, the, it's like a numbers game, right? There's all this people and all this hope and all this disappointment. And, you know, do you get any response? I mean, it's, it seems like such a shot in the dark, you know? I mean, it really does. And I know that how discouraging that is for people. So I can't imagine that if somebody's serious about it, the idea of working with you as a matchmaker, or, if, you know, if they're not in Seattle, find somebody in their city would be a huge relief, right? Right. And Exactly. And like you say, it can get very discouraging. Absolutely. Right. Not, not at all. the faint of heart. And knowing that you have somebody that has your back and you can just, I get some clients and members just texting me and just who they're members of straight to the heart, but they're also online. Cause that's one thing that I do suggest mm. is casting your net wide. Right. You never know who you're going to meet. You can one at the airport, you can meet someone online or through your matchmaker. You just never know. So, but I definitely get um, members or clients that touch base with me and and ask me questions about online, how they're frustrated, and and I love to help them. And sometimes it's like, oh, improving your photo or saying a few extra things that are on, on the positive side with your bio. So it's having that kind of support system that really helps because it is, it is kind of can be yeah. get All right. So you actually <laughs> support people in their, if, I mean, if they're one of your clients, it's not like you tell them don't be online. You, yeah. that's part of the service you provide is helping them with their, their profile or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I provide a service that is kind of called like an online makeover, okay. a dating makeover. And I love it. It's fun and easy for me to do because nine out of 10 times, it is just maybe tweaking pictures since that's one of the first things people right. see, right? Are your photos. It can be easily fixed. So that's a service I do. do Anything provide. else that you provide like that we haven't talked about? Uh, yes, I am debuting a coaching program. It's an eight week um, intensive coaching program that I'm really excited about. And I had success with a former member and she is, she's now married. In fact, she asked uh, me to officiate their wedding. So I got to officiate their wedding on Valentine's Day. But she was my first member that I did a course with that's called Manifest Your Soulmate. And I'm really passionate about that program. So that is a coaching program okay. that I do as well. And I have a right. podcast that <laughs> you recently on <laughs> called um, Real Souls. And I just wanted to talk about things that I'm passionate about. And it's everything from love, sex, dating, relationships, and manifesting your best life. So I, uh, every other Sunday, my podcast, Real yeah. Souls, uh, cool. airs. All right. So where so, can people find you? Yeah. You know, your website, like how can they, you know, learn more about the, the coaching program or where, where do they go? Sure. My website is straight to the heart. Dot net, or they can email me directly, Peggy at straight to the heart dot net. Okay, great. I'll put those links in the show notes too, so people have that. So wonderful. Well, I hope um, I hope your business booms, and I hope you're bringing love and connection to people all over the Puget Sound. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Thanks so much, Jessica, for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks. Okay. Bye bye. You've been listening to Better Sex. Please visit our website, bettersexpodcast.com, for show notes and additional episodes. And that's a wrap for today. I really hope you enjoyed the episode. If you are enjoying the podcast, if some of this material resonates with you and you would like to make a difference and make sure that this keeps coming out in the world once a week, ongoing, there are a couple things you could do to show your appreciation. The first would be to go to iTunes and rate and review the show. That really helps us be found by new listeners when you review the show on iTunes. You can find a link at bettersexpodcast.com slash iTunes. The other thing I want to invite you to consider is becoming a Patreon. For a small monthly pledge, you get some benefits. 
So for $2 a month, you get advance access to every single episode. For $5 a month, you get a chapter of my upcoming new book. And for $10 a month, I host quarterly get to know you and question and answer chats over the web. And you get invited to that. I would love to have your membership in that become part of the Better Sex family. You can find a link at bettersexpodcast.com slash Patreon, which is P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Again, thanks for listening. I'm glad you're here. Feel free to comment, ask questions, get in touch. I'd love to hear from listeners. Thanks. Thanks.